What's going on, everybody? This is Harris DeMarco, Speak podcast host. Today, I'm very excited to record this episode. It's actually a friend of mine who I graduated high school with. She runs a travel blog uh, for the past 12 years called TravelingJerseyGirl.com. She's the author of uh, Spiritual Nomad, A Journey Within and Abroad, a book that she launched last year. And she's also working on a second book, uh, which is going to be helping teens with anxiety. So welcome our guest today, Laura. What's happening, Laura? What's good? (laughs) How do you feel? How's life? Good, good. Um, I know. It's like, I feel like I haven't seen you since 2000. I know, I know. You look the same, but uh, I'm pretty, I look a little different. (laughs) No, you look the same to me. (laughs) Yeah, my hair shifted it. Instead of here, now it's down here. (laughs) So... What's up? I haven't talked to you since high school. It's, it's really awesome to like always catch up with people that like no. you haven't seen in a long time. I know. Well, a lot's happened in 10, uh, 10 plus years, but yeah, all pretty much all good stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't live in Jersey anymore, but I mm-hmm. moved up to New York. So I'm actually just an hour North. So it's not. Too- oh, okay. Are you like right in the city or like upstate? No, I mean, uh, it's called, you know, Rockland County. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Or like, oh, so I'm up in this area. It's not far, but I still have family and friends down in Edison. So mm-hmm. I come down there sometimes. Plus like the restaurants I miss so much from. Oh yeah. The food's great here. You know, you can't beat it. <laughs> I know. Do you know, I met someone when I, cause I went, when I, what was it last May? I went to Cuba mm-hmm. and I met some Indian family and they asked where I was from. And I was like, oh, I used to grow up in Jersey and I lived in Edison. He was like, in Edison? He's like, <laughs> he's like, they have the best Indian food ever. I was like, only in Cuba. <laughs> Eat someone who was like talking about Edison, New Jersey. That's so weird. Like small fucking world. Yeah, it's weird. Like even when I go out, like some people, they they know Edison, New Jersey. Like that's yeah. like the hub, you know, yeah. especially in, like really close to New Brunswick too. So yeah. something about it, man. I know, yeah. but growing up in Edison, it's like, who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah, you don't appreciate you don't appreciate it until you leave. Mm-hmm. So. so how's your brother doing? Andrew's good? Yeah, he's good. He's out in LA. Or no, he's out in California. I forget where he's at. Uh, um, in the Bay Area, I think. But, you know, he's a he's a chef. So Yeah, I see some of his stuff. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I haven't talked to him in a while either. Yeah, he's he's in his own bubble out there, but he's he's doing well so it's good but i mean he got him and his friends got screwed with this whole corona thing with like the restaurants and everything oh yeah so he's just like it's crazy out here and he i was like well just be glad you're not here in new york because it's like bad over here you know yeah i couldn't imagine you know being where you're at i mean it's bad here in jersey but hey and the west coast is kind of bad too it seems like there's cases popping off on both coasts but Mm -hmm. i don't know we just got to sit tight right now and hope for the best you know yeah but uh yeah listen i saw you on tea with gary v mm-hmm. and i've followed gary v for a long time like since like the ask gary v days and like his early youtube days so when i i, I was like drinking my coffee <laughs> logging into work and checking my instagram and stuff and i saw gary's post and i was like all right what you got from last episode or whatever and i was like oh shit i know her <laughs> <laughs> I was like so shocked like to see you yeah. on there and I've been trying yeah. to get on like since Ask Gary V show way back. Yeah. I've and <laughs> for a long ass time. Well, I've been following him too for a while and like, you know, cuz once I heard he's from Edison, mm-hmm. from, like Jersey, I was like, "Oh, I like this guy." But um yeah, it took me a while to get on. Yeah, I was so psyched and it was a really dope episode too, like a little clip, but there were so many nuggets in there. I'm I'm not even kidding. Like that's why I reposted that clip because mm-hmm. I was watching and I was like, dude, this like I needed to hear this. Like the questions that she's asking, you know, because you were starting, you were writing, you're trying to like, yeah, yeah. you know, get some turnover and things like that. So I know that feeling. Like I'm creating podcasts, I'm trying to create turnover, I'm, yeah. you know, working on that following, all this stuff. Yeah. So I totally related to that, but it was just really cool, like seeing from your perspective. You know, and some of the things that you're going through, it was just, it, it, I don't know, something about it. Yeah, but. it was, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely surreal. Um, I, 
did not expect that call to go the way it did. Like mm-hmm. in my mind, I had it so different. I was like, no, we're going to talk about my blog. And like, he's going to help me try to figure it out. And like, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Things about videos. I was yeah. Like, this is hot. <laughs> but, um, it was what I needed, I guess. I crazy mean, though. Right. Isn't that crazy? And then after like, as the, the episode, like it was what, like five to 10 minutes, not even. And like, I didn't even, you had so many more followers I wasn't even paying attention. Like he was like, do you see the comments? I was like, no, yeah. like, I had I, w- I wasn't even on my phone. So I didn't realize, but like when I saw, I saw one person was like, she's at 2,500. I was like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> and then like, it just was nonstop. Like those first three days I was like, I don't even know what to do. Like, how do I answer all these people? Right. My phone was blowing the fuck up. I was like, I so much exposure. I mean, it's all good exposure, but then it could be overwhelming too. Like, holy was. shit, there's a lot of messages. Like, I'm not used to this. Yeah. So I feel. Uh, I think it was by Friday. I was like a little burnt out, and I was like, mm. all right, I'm tapping out, people. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that crazy though? How many people that you can reach just by like an influencer? But not only that, like yeah. that, so many people are actually connected to you. And I'm sure you got so much good feedback, you know, just from that episode and people who might have felt the same way or struggled with anxiety or being on camera and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I thought that, too. I was like, wow, it's 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 crazy how much uh, one person can have so much power in, in a way to, like, influence that many people within such a short period of time. But, yeah, um, you know, it, what was your what is the second thing you said? It's like the exposure that you were getting and also like how many people could actually connect with you on certain things that you might not have, you know, even thought of, like dealing with anxiety or dealing with being on camera and stuff. Yeah, I mean, that was like another shocking thing. Like, I don't know, I guess I didn't expect so many people to resonate in some strange way. I was like, really? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But um, yeah, and the, the messages were crazy. Like, you know, and just to all the people who kept saying, like, I feel the same way about video or like, I st- like people who reached out who have like, like legit YouTube channels were like, I still hate video. I'm like, what? Yeah. Wow. So it was cool to for even for me to have the feedback come back to me to realize, like, I'm not the only one who feels that way. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it was uh, it was it was cool to hear a lot of people's stories. Yeah, and I, I'm, I definitely can relate to that. Like, I come across as a very, you know, kind of aggressive, kind of in your face, kind of loud kind of guy. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like pressing that damn red button to record yourself and then listening to yourself is kind of like, Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> still like it's gotten a little bit easier, even though mm-hmm. like a week in, in some change. But it's not what it was before where I was like, this is not happening at all. Like I'm not doing it. I actually thought about it and I'm actually kind of sad. I deleted it. I made a video. What was it? Five years ago or something when I was trying to go to Europe after high school Mm -hmm. and I was like crying in it because I was like, I don't know if this is going to happen. Like I'm scared to go. And I was like such a vulnerable video. And I was, I remember watching it and I was like, this is fucking horrible. I was like, I can't watch this shit. I was like, who's going to want to watch this? And I was like, no. But now I was like, shit, I probably should have. Yeah, I know. I know. I have those moments too. And (laughs) so many videos that I've deleted or I've like done so many takes on anything, even like what I post on YouTube, like YouTube stories or not. I mean, uh, IG stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't like the way that sounds. But then I go back to it. I'm like, God damn it. You should have just posted that. Yeah. I'm but. kind of learning to just like post without giving a shit. Mm-hmm. If it's like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Like I, <laughs> well, I mean, I cut it out, but like for some reason I'm like, <laughs> like this last video I just did today, I was like, oh, like, thank you at the end. And I was like, thank you. The fuck? <laughs> I was like, you fucking idiot. I was like, thank you, really? <laughs> so I was like, let me cut that out. <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't know why. Like, I did that, like, twice. And I was like, why am I saying thank you? What the f- <laughs> That's hilarious. So weird. 
but it seems like you're doing great now you know like these constant videos that you're posting and like i see you're posting too like about your chapters you're like reading like a segment mm -hmm. and posting that so that's like really cool like especially yeah. being a writer yeah i mean i en i enjoy doing the uh the reading part that's fun for me because mm -hmm. it's like i'm like reliving it again so it's cool that's great yeah. so like when did you start writing because i knew you back in like i think sixth or seventh grade mm -hmm. and then high school like we weren't really that close but we had a few classes together and stuff mm -hmm. or i think yeah and um you were always like a quiet like unassuming girl mm -hmm. but we i always knew there was like a little wisp in there somewhere like a little badassery and stuff <laughs> and then especially talking to your brother too like just how he is i'm like all right it's it's probably in the family you know so yeah, yeah. how'd you get into like writing like well, I've always excelled in writing when I was in school. So writing was always like my strong suit. I loved English. So um, it was always something, I think because I was so quiet in school, writing was like my my space to like be me and like express myself in some way. And then um, I've always journaled as a kid. I've always journaled a lot. And then this this current book took me four and a half years to write. Wow really yeah, yeah. holy shit long, yeah it took me a long time because like I was still like like I would write some of it but then I was like no I'm not done yet like you know and now looking back I was like I didn't live chapter eight yet you know what I mean mm -hmm. it, it took such a long time for that stuff so like this second one is easier because i'm like it's fiction like i'm making it up this one was like my real mm -hmm. life you know it was a span of like what was it yeah like 10 years or something so it took me a long time people don't realize how hard it is to write a book either you know you're just like oh I they know. just wrote a book that's how they became famous blah 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 <laughs> yeah but you think about it back in school you're like oh my god a 10 page paper oh yeah and i'm like i wrote like 100 plus pages i don't know how i did it but, mm -hmm. um it was, it was definitely a really cool experience. And I'm glad that I kept my, um, what was it? My travel journals throughout the years. Cause I would have never remembered half the shit mm -hmm. I had, you know, was it hard? Like initially, because like, I've thought about writing, like I, I like to write and then like express thoughts, just like you're saying, like taking stuff from your mind and put it on paper mm -hmm. and eventually I like, put it into like video form. Mm -hmm. But like the, I feel like everybody might want to write a book one day, but they have no idea how or even like how to go about it, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody truly knows really. I mean, as I, I mean, there's things out there where people will be like, oh, like how to write a book in like two months or whatever. And for me, I don't think you can rush something like that. Like if it's something creative and it's something that means a lot to you, like, you can't, uh, like a friend said to me, it's like, it's like a masterpiece. Like Mozart didn't like rush his like, you know, best symphony or whatever he, you know, his music and stuff like that. That took years or however long, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, it takes time. But I think if you, like, I just wrote it like I was writing like a long paper. I didn't even care about like how to format it and all this shit because like I'm in a lot of writing groups like on Facebook and there's a huge writing community on um on Twitter mm -hmm. and just reading and just hearing other people's like experiences with it really helped me like okay well I'm definitely not doing that or like oh I'm definitely gonna make a note and do it like this so like that's kind of how I learned I just learned from other people and then um kind of just went my own way also like didn't take everybody's advice to heart you know I took bits and pieces so but it, it was definitely a learning curve yeah that's what Gary always says too is like to be patient you know like things take time be patient and we're in this like instant gratification kind yeah. of place right now everybody wants everything yesterday how fast can you make a website how fast can you put out a product on the website how, how fast yeah. can you turn a buck you know so, and then uh, I saw your blog, you have a really nice blog, a lot of good content on there, a lot of yeah. good writing. It's really awesome. I saw the one with the horseshoe bend and I was recently there a few months back in February. And, uh, yeah, it seems like a lot of great places connecting with a lot of good people. 
and I, I, yeah well, i haven't written in a while i i've like even though it was last year i want to write my cuba piece because mm -hmm. it was cool um but yeah it's it's been it's been a cool and wild ride when it comes to writing um I had a thought and I just lost it. Well, how was the blog? Like when you first started the blog, you know, 12 yeah. years ago was a long time, you know, to start a blog. That's really pretty early, right? Yeah. I mean, it was like in the height of like the heyday of blogs. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I really wanted to just be a travel blogger for full time. And that's kind of what I was trying to plan on doing when I was going to Europe. I was like, no, I'm going to do this full time. Cause there was a lot of people that I knew in the travel blog world that was doing that. But it wasn't as easy as I thought. And I think I missed the opportunity of probably doing video back then. Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't traveling as much as I could have. And I just kind of lost that luster for being a full-time travel blogger. And then it just, you know, I kind of tried doing it when I went back, like in 2014, to go live there, to try to do it that way. And I was like, hmm, this is just not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like, I still like to write about traveling and stuff like that. But then it, like, this is kind of like this battle that I've had for 12 years where I'm like, do I give this up or do I change it? And I was, it was just such, it's just, it's kind of always been like that where I'm like, I'm not traveling like I used to, mm -hmm. but I still love to travel and still talk about it. But I also have like this whole different side where I'm more like artistic and creative with my writing and like, how do I showcase both? You know, I totally know. Totally know. I started a blog in uh, like 2014 or 15 mm -hmm. and it was my own personal blog. I was supposed to be all like into travel and stuff. That was when I was going to Hawaii a couple of times, you know, every like other year. And uh, I wanted to like take pictures. I wanted to write about it. But always something got in the way or I let something get in the way. So I put it off. I still have the website, but it's not launched, you know? Mm -hmm. So now the podcast takes precedence, but it, I know that feeling where you're like shuffling and then you're trying to figure out what's going to work, what's not going to work. And it's not easy making a website either and no, I, taking the I, time. Yeah. And I learned back in the day, I learned back on WordPress. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> and then I switched over. <laughs> yeah. I kept WordPress for a long Those time. Those fucking plugins. Oh my God. I'd, I'd be on there for hours. Yep. Like, and then when I didn't know something, I'd be like, all right, I'd be YouTubing it. And yes. It oh my God. Yeah. I would be in Panera Bread sitting on my little laptop. Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I had it for a while. And then like, honestly, within maybe a year or two, like recently, kind of, I switched over to Squarespace. Yep. I'm like, never look back. <laughs> this is so easy. Give me the template. Post just yeah. uh, Squarespace. I use it too. It's awesome. Yeah, it's great. So, but yeah, it's, um, you never know when that time will come when may you never know. I feel like just keep your blog anyway, because you never know when you actually might get a spark and you're like, oh, now I know how I could use it. Yes. You know? Definitely. Yeah. So when, when did you like first go when you traveled? Because I was reading like a little bit of your blog and it was saying that you went to Europe initially, like it was a high school trip. So I don't, I wish I could find out who the teacher was because so how people to people works is well, they changed the rules now because I reached out to them recently. But um, back then, a teacher had to nominate you to go. So mm. I got nominated to go. And then I forget where it was, somewhere in Monroe or something where I had to go to this school. Like my, mm. me and my dad went. So he was like, listen, if you want, because I think I was 17. I don't know. I was junior or senior I don't remember probably junior year but he was like well you're gonna graduate soon he's like this could be like an early grad gift either you can have your car like since you're learning to drive or you could take this trip instead and I was like I want the trip fuck the car <laughs> like, smart I was like I want the trip so I got to go and I was like 17 but it was um, and then I reached out to the company because I was like, is there any way that I could find out who that teacher was? Because like, I have to thank that teacher yeah. for changing my life. 
and they were like oh well they had some like I don't know like corporate stuff where they're like not getting along with like the new person who took over and they like deleted and got rid of like all the files (laughs) from back then oh wow fuck unbelievable yeah so I was like I guess I'll never know unless that teacher ever hears me talking about it and comes forward and is like that was me (laughs) but uh yeah it was have you did you ever go on a trip like before then you know outside the country with like family or anything um back then i mean i went to canada but i feel like canada doesn't count (laughs) i'm like not really (laughs) maybe a little i guess but like that's kind of where like i guess the furthest i've ever gone um, cause me and my dad and my brother used to go up to Canada and like do like a fishing trip every summer and like stay in a cabin and like sit on a lake. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think that's part of the reason why I enjoy being in nature and being cut off from things because there was no Wi-Fi up there. You were in the middle of nowhere, just a cabin and a lake and that's it. Yeah. I gotta love like, it. Yeah. It's the best away from everything just isolated because we in used to nature. do that before yeah we used to do that before school so we would like the the week no like end of august we would go and then it would be nice because then we would like read the summer books that we were like required to read up there <laughs> and then just chill out before like the school year started so it was a nice way to like start the school year that's great yeah so you went to europe uh, in when you were 17 how was that experience like going to Europe and you were going, you went like completely by yourself or you're with a group. I mean, I was with by myself, but then like, so how people to people works was it's an educational thing. So I got, so I got college credit to go. Um, and then, um, they chose, so it was like, I think a group of like 50 kids or something like that, but they were from all over New Jersey. So like, everybody was like complete strangers but like prior to going like once a month or like every other weekend or something we had to meet up do projects and like we all had to like and this was including the parents too like we had to do um what is it a uh, volunteer work mm-hmm. places in jersey so i mean we sort of knew each other before we left but like not really yeah but by the end of it we were like crying and like like we didn't want to anybody to leave like we were so close Mm -hmm. after that trip it was so cool that's the best like trips really connect you to people like uh, last year i went to greece with my wife and like every trip that we ever go on though we always meet somebody that we always stay in touch with Mm -hmm. i went to dr one year and we're still in touch with these people you know like it's the craziest thing going on trips and like bonding in that way there's something really special about it there is something I can't pinpoint what that is. It's almost like, I don't know if there's like a, there's like almost like time stops mm-hmm. in some weird way. And cause I'm still friends with people that I've traveled and met and I met them one time. Yeah. We had one conversation. Yep. Yeah. I'm still really cool with them. Mm-hmm. And it was like years ago. So it's, there's something about traveling. I can't, I don't under, I don't know what it is. I can't, name it it's hard to describe it's just i don't know they seem like people are, people seem to be more open yeah i guess less stress when they're on vacation they're kind of just yeah. chilling out you know open they're open more open more sensitive to being in relationships like as as like friends or you know, acquaintances mm-hmm. and stuff getting to know one another yeah and yeah, it's something else yeah but how was uh so where'd you go exactly in europe um so for that first one, I, it was like 20 days to six different countries. So it was. Damn, almost like a month. Holy yeah. shit. But to yeah, so it was a lot. We were on like one of those like big coach buses. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was an exhausting trip, but it was fun at the same time. Plus I was like 17 or something. So like when you're that young, you don't give a shit about yeah. sleep really. Um, but. We went to like, uh, I think we flew into Switzerland. We went to Switzerland, Germany, uh, Netherlands, Belgium, UK, and France. Wow. It's like six, seven countries right there. Yeah. In 20 days. Damn. Yeah, it was a lot. (laughs) It was a lot. That's crazy. Yeah. 
Where did you stay? Like, uh, was it in like hotels or hostels or? We stayed in both. Mm-hmm. We stayed in both. But uh, we, they had, it was just very educational, which I liked because we just met like people like, you know, um, like I remember this one where it was like, we went to this like farm in Germany and it was like how this lady was showing us like how they make like fresh milk from their cows. And like, she made us like fresh bread. It was just like super, super cool to meet all these people. Wow. Yeah. People live such different lives too. You know, when you travel to other places, you're like, wow, this is how they do things here. Mm -hmm. It opened my world. And then like, I think my senior year, I was like, to me, I was a completely different person. Like I didn't feel like I was like that shy girl anymore. Mm -hmm. It just like, gave me such a confidence to like, I was like, what? I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) I was like, I need to keep going. And then I was like, then the next year after I graduated high school, I went back for two months to go backpacking by myself. Wow. Yeah. You're so young too. Like, I mean, when you're 17, like you think you're fucking hot shit and you're like, you know, you own the world or whatever. But when you look back at it, Like, you're super young. You don't know, you know? Maybe you have a checking account. (laughs) Maybe. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I mean, my family was always, they're, you know, they're super open and, like, super supportive of stuff like that. Like, you know, follow your heart and passion for things. So when I think back of it now, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I was 18. My family let me go. (laughs) So, like, you guys fucking know. But I went with my cousin, but like still we were both because he's two years older than me. So, I mean, he was 20. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were still very young to be going. And we only did Germany, Switzerland and Austria for two months. Mm -hmm. But like that one was different because I'm like that one was like we're on our fucking own. Yeah. We need to figure it out. (laughs) So what was like the worst experience, like the most terrifying experience over there being there by yourself and figuring shit out and like you didn't you don't speak the language right no yeah i I unfortunately have so many because it's just like so many crazy shit has happened during traveling but i think the scariest one was when i when i got sick and i think anywhere wherever you are when you're not close to home being sick is the worst Mm. and i was in switzerland and i i don't know i got sick from someone because I shouldn't have done it. It was so stupid. She was like, oh, I feel sick. But she's like, have my beer. And I was like, okay, whatever. (laughs) And I don't know what she had. She was like, has the flu or something. And like, it was summertime and I was freezing. Like I was in a hoodie like this. Mm -hmm. My cousin was a dick and was like, oh, I'm going to stay here. And I'm like, and I think my money was running out. And I was like, I had to fly back early. And he was like, well, I'm staying. I was like, what do you mean you're staying? And I was like, he's like, no, I'm going to stay. And I'm like, but I ha- but where we flew into, we flew into Germany. So like, we were going to have to like circle back to Germany towards the end. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so you're going to make me go travel back to Germany from Switzerland by myself when I'm sick. This is, I was like. That's really screwed up. <laughs> yeah, I was so pissed. I was like, fuck. But like. And then trying, so when I finally made it back, um, I was like, went to the hostel. I was like, listen, I don't feel good. I don't know what I have. Like, where can I go? And like, I think at 7 PM, like they close like their pharmacies out there. And he was like, well, there's like a pharmacy, like under the train station. I was like, what? I was like, fuck. I was like, oh my God. So like, you know, I didn't go to a doctor or anything. Like I'm going to this pharmacy and I'm like, I think this is what I have. I was like, I feel like I have the flu, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. So they gave me some like German fucking medicine. I can't read the fucking label. I don't know how many to take. (laughs) I just took one because I was like, I'm not fucking with this shit. (laughs) And then it was like the, I don't know what the hell it was, but it, that was terrifying because I didn't have like a thermometer to like, I knew I had a fever, but like, that was scary. Cause then like, it just sucks being by yourself. And I was like, and I had the coolest fucking roommate because, and I'm still cool with him today. He was like my bunk mate, like, mm-hmm. like on the bottom bunk with me. And I, and he knew I was sick and he was from LA and 
he was like, did you just take that medicine? I was like, yeah. I was like, he was like, be careful with that. He's like, that shit will fuck you up. I was like, I feel like I'm tripping balls. I was like, what is this shit? He was like, just don't take too much. I was like, no, I only took one. Wow. I was like, I'm not taking any more. But um, he was like, if you need anything, like, let me know. And he like, you know, he like looked after me, which wasn't good. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that was pretty scary. <laughs> Holy shit couldn't imagine that Ugh. yeah yeah so that sucked so where else have you been in in europe like um, you've it seems like you've went to so many places just in that one area yeah europe was kind of my thing for a bit i still love it and miss it there i went to italy also um how'd you like italy that, that's on my next like list if i'm to go somewhere yeah it's cool it's it's uh it's fucking huge um to me it's a trip on its own like um it's you can do I feel like you need to have like at least a solid two weeks to have to really enjoy it uh because it's so big uh but it the food was amazing because I when I was living in Switzerland and I was like over it and I left and I went down to Italy I was like I can't wait to have seafood I was so obsessed with seafood because in Switzerland they're landlocked Mm -hmm. so there wasn't much variety or it was hard to get seafood there and I was like oh my god I just want seafood (laughs) and I met these two girls um from couch surfing Mm -hmm. and I traveled with them to Italy we actually really hit it off because they're I think they're from the west coast and we had a girls weekend Mm -hmm. in Italy it was amazing. Oh. And, I, and they were like hating me because I was like, I swear to God, if I don't have seafood during this fucking trip, <laughs> they were like, we need to get her seafood. She won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> but it was a, the best food I ever had. Oh. Hands down. And and the wine was uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Calamari, seafood. Yeah. They had these weird little things because we went to Cinque Terre and mm-hmm. so they have like, um, I don't know, like like little cones like i guess like if you were to get like fries or something like a paper cone oh yeah like stuffed with like all seafood like like fried up or whatever it was man it was crack it was (laughs) so good you didn't get any gain any weight over there though i don't know how you're walking around so much right well you could yeah but yeah there's so much walking Mm -hmm. that's why i like it there too because there's just like do you have authentic pizza yeah, it was good. I, you know, it's different. Theirs, theirs is different than ours. Mm-hmm. But I, I appreciate theirs. But I'm like, mm, no, nah, I'd rather have New York. Yeah. What about the pasta? Pasta was crack. I had. Um, I remember I had like a vegetarian dish that blew my mind. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. Like, it was just so fresh. And like the meats were just like unbelievable, like everything there. Yeah, they know how to cook, that's for sure. Ugh. Yeah, you just you just don't find anything else like that here, unless well, there's one restaurant in the, in the city that is comparable to me, mm-hmm. to like Italy. It's like this little hole in the wall down in Soho. Mm-hmm. Like, not even joking, it's so tiny, but um, it's like the cheapest italian food but it's so authentic and it's so great i'll, I'll have to like give you the name because i forgot but <laughs> it's so good so what sites did you see over there other so other than the food like where did you go notably um, let me see i went to i didn't spend that much time there um i went to the leaning tower of pisa which was like pretty uneventful <laughs> Just this tilted building. <laughs> it was weird because like when you're walking down the street to like go up to it, you just like out of nowhere, you'll see this building like this and you like, it almost gives you like vertigo a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, that's like weird. Yeah. Like, like from like a distance. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was cool. I mean, I was like, all right, it's a leaning tower. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and It's just like a, it's a lot smaller than I thought. Like I thought it was big. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's big, but like, I thought it would be bigger. Um, and then it's just like a field of people like taking those like funny photos with it. Yeah. But, but it, to me, Pisa is like a day trip. Like you, you can just go there and, and bounce. You see the Coliseum? 
I didn't get to see any of that. No. No, I only went to Pisa and like a, another uh, little town called Rimini, which is mm-hmm. like a beach town. Um, because I was like trying to li- uh, work somewhere else in Italy, but Italy was difficult to find work when I was there. So you're traveling and working at the same time, mm-hmm. like overseas. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, when I went to Switzerland, I was working in the hotel, mm-hmm. and I was um. Like when I went, I had, I had, um, cause I booked a, a one way ticket when I went. So I had no plan of where I was going to live, where I was going to work. And that is so brave and so ballsy, yeah. like unbelievably. <laughs> yeah. It was scary as fuck. Like it, um, it didn't hit me until I got to the airport and my dad was like, about to be like, oh, okay, bye, like have fun and good luck and whatever. And I was like, fuck, I was like, I'm scared, dad. I was like, uh, I was like what the fuck am I doing? He's like, it's going to be the best thing for you. He's like, fucking go. He's like, I've always wanted to do something like this. And he's like, you know, you're going to enjoy it. Things will work out. And uh, if not, obviously you just fly home. That's awesome that you have his support like that. That's so empowering too, because yeah. like you, you feel like just good, you know, like just yeah. to hear that, like, okay got this you know yeah but um and i was going back to the same hostel that i went back when i was 18 Mm -hmm. and with the hopes of like they're in my mind i was like they're gonna give me a job they're gonna remember me and like i'm gonna live there and blah 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 and i was like i haven't been here in six years i was like i don't know I literally just walked up to the door i was like hey (laughs) do you remember me (laughs) And I was like, there was like this other, like the manager. And I was like, where's the manager at? Cause I remember we had a conversation when I was 18 where he was like, if you can work here, just get your Italian or get an EU passport. And I was like, fine. Okay. Which I did. I wound up getting that took six years to get. And then, um, I like remember going around the corner into the garden and I was like, Hey, he was like, Holy shit. And I was shocked he remembered me that quick. He was like, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm back. I was like, I want to work here and I want to live here. And he's like, you got it. He's like, you can work here. He's like, let me. Dude, what a hookup. Holy shit. You come back there. You need a job? No problem. <laughs> Within a week, I had, wow. I had a job and a place to live. And then I had a friend of mine who I knew from six years ago reach out to me because he heard that I was coming out there. And he was like, hey, uh, you can stay with me until you can find your place. And I was like, wow. I was like, how crazy is this? Man. I was like the whole synchronicity of it, things were yeah. falling into place. And I was like, okay, this is going to work. This is going to work. And how old were you at that time? That time I was 24. 24. So you had gone to college, not gone to college? Yeah, I, I graduated college and then I was like, yeah, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> I went to jobs mm-hmm. after college. I was like, no, I need a break. Yeah. And I honestly wasn't sure what I wanted to do after college. And I really wanted to travel. And I got like a teaching certificate to like teach English. And that was kind of going to be my plan. But um, it didn't work out either. <laughs> I know it's every time like you have a plan to work something out, it works out in like such a different way. Yeah. Cause you know, my plan was to try to either teach English. Cause I was going to try to go out further to like Thailand or to India mm-hmm. where it was cheaper to live. Cause I was like, I can't sustain living here much longer with the pay that I was getting. And so I was like, I have to go out further out where it's cheaper, but I wasn't staying long enough to like go through the process of like getting a visa and stuff. And I was just like, my money's running out. I was like, I'm just like screwed. So yeah. It just didn't work. So did you start writing like uh, when you were 24 or even before that? No, like for the blog, like for the, for the book, like when did you start writing for spiritual nomad? So I didn't really necessarily know I was writing for a book. I just always was writing in my journal and I don't know why I had such a huge pull to do that every day. Cause there, there's some in my old travel journal, like the black one that I have that I talk about, I can tell 
like I used to even write when I was drunk like, <laughs> wasted I was like no I need to write this page I'm like I don't care how <laughs> I, am. I was like I gotta remember what happened today <laughs> um, so and uh I don't know it I honestly didn't know until maybe uh I'm gonna say maybe a few years ago I was just like fuck it I'm gonna try to do it because I was like maybe I can compile all my stuff into one thing mm -hmm. and see what happens but you had your travel blog at that time though right so you're still yeah. adding some things there yeah so I was still doing that but then I just wanted to because I've heard stories where people have like they like when I would come home and I would tell friends and family my stories and like but I would tell them stuff that was like not in my travel blog because I just didn't think it was like I don't know like appropriate I guess yeah I would tell them like other things that happen and they're like that's so crazy like you like you should tell people that and then I was just like or people were so inspired by certain things that I did and you know so then I was like maybe I should just like try to write it all together yeah just, you know it's so unassuming too like you're you come across so unassuming like if you were to say hey guess how many places i've been mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> i'll never guess that yeah. you lived you know after high school after college overseas for so long the majority of your adult life you've lived in europe you know <laughs> well no i mean i was out there for a while and then i lived i lived in switzerland for it really wasn't as long as I hoped I was there for like three and a half months but, mm -hmm. um I did travel between like high school years and then like the end of high school into my college years or after college I did travel quite a bit and like I did like one of my favorite ones even though it was a difficult one was um Costa Rica I was there for two weeks I did a road trip through there That's awesome but with a guy that I met in Switzerland and hung out with him for one day. Wow. He, he took me rock climbing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how much I loved rock climbing. And he was so cool. And then when we came back, we were still in touch. And I was like, I was like, I got to go rock climbing again. I was like, I'm hooked on it. And he's like, let's go to another country. And we'll go rock climbing there. Man. So we chose Costa Rica. And it was awesome. Damn. That's where my, my wife went there actually for her uh, yoga certification yeah. and she's wanted me to go there. She always raves about it. I it's such a beautiful it. country. It's so, it's so beautiful and it's, uh, it's cheap too, which is mm -hmm. cool if you, if you do it right. Yeah. So were you like soul searching or something? Do you think like, were you looking for something? Cause I, I feel like a lot of, as soon as I saw uh, your book cover, actually, I thought of that movie, um, wild with uh reese witherspoon have you seen that i haven't seen it but i i want to read the book oh yeah you'll you'll love it i mean uh i haven't read the book i'm one of those guys who always watches the movie but never reads the oh, book no, i like the book <laughs> there's so many books out there that i'm like i would watch the movie i'm like damn you guys took out so much shit yeah <laughs> um yeah i mean i guess i i mean i guess i was i don't i guess i was kind of hooked on how how good I felt when, because you know what it was like when I was dealing with anxiety in high school and college, there was such a control thing where I felt like I had to constantly control to feel good. Mm -hmm. So when I would travel, I had no control because I'm in a foreign country. I don't speak the language. I don't know where the ha where the fuck I'm going half the time. And I was starting to realize like when I would let go, cause I would be like, how come when I travel, I don't have anxiety, but when I come home, I do. Yeah. And I, was, and I was trying to figure out like, what was it about traveling and who, because I feel like I'm a different person. When yes. I travel. yes. And I was like, and I was kind of hooked on that. And I was like, how do I bring that back home? Mm -hmm. So I just realized that I think it was more, over the years of just like, all right, let it go. Like if shit happens, the shit happens, you know, and trying not to control everything. And, and, um, if, you know, and I, and I think that's kind of what I was searching for. And I think I also was searching for love also in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. And then I like convinced myself that nobody would 
be with me because I love traveling so much mm-hmm. and, I, and it's affected some of my relationships that I've had I broke up with somebody solely because of my traveling because they wanted to settle down and I didn't mm-hmm. and um I think that was a huge thing too because I was like who's gonna want to be with me when I want to travel all the time you know yeah but um it worked out because I'm married too so that's great <laughs> yeah. how long have you been married uh, like a month. <laughs> Congratulations. I know. We got married last month, but we, we've been together for like five years. That's awesome. Did you meet him in another country? No. It's so funny. Like, so I always had this like thought in my head, like, oh, I'm going to meet someone like abroad. I'm going to wind up moving abroad somewhere. And I'm like. So Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so I came home and of course, like I meet my now husband and. He's like lives in fucking New York. Like I was like, oh, of course. He's like <laughs> fucking in my own backyard. I was like, of course he would be. <laughs> so, but he's he's super cool, and he's he doesn't travel as much as I do, but because he's been with me, like he loves to do it, mm-hmm. and uh, he's he wants to see the world, and he's always like, whenever we travel, he's like, you're the traveling Jersey girl. You have to plan everything. <laughs> You know, I mean, I don't, we don't plan super, like, I just know how to travel well, where you're Mm -hmm. not spending a lot of money and just little tips and stuff like that. So where have you guys gone together, like travel wise? Um, Our first trip was Montreal. Mm -hmm. That was like within our first year. Um, That was interesting. We didn't, we didn't get to do that much there. We were there for like a long weekend and then we've been to did we go uh we've done a lot of like little road trips throughout the states and stuff like that and then like we went to austin which is awesome nice like my dad lives there now wow yeah he loves so many people there. austin's like building up in a big yeah. way i keep hearing a few people moving there or, hey we went to austin like it's such a like i'm trying to it's such a progressive t- city mm-hmm. and it's uh I heard there's a lot of hippies over there too yeah it's a little bit hipster it's like um i would say kind of like brooklyn ish Mm -hmm. like how the that crew of people um the beer scene is awesome the food's amazing it's cheap out there that's why i think a lot of people are going out there Mm -hmm. um but yeah we've been there and then like um where else did we go oh yeah cuba was our biggest like I think that was like our first like real, real international trip together. Mm-hmm. That was interesting because <laughs> I told him, I was like, are you ready for this? I was like, I'm so down to rough it. I have no problem. Mm-hmm. He doesn't. Yeah. He's not that much about roughing it. And I was like, you ready? Because <laughs> I was like, I think you're going to be in for a rude awakening. <laughs> but it was definitely interesting. That's for sure. Wow. This is really cool. So have you been to like uh, the Asia side? No, I want Not yet. so bad. I just don't know about that damn flight. Yeah, the flight is pretty crazy. I went to India with my wife a few oh, years no. back. I'm obsessed with India. Dude, it's a, it was an insane trip. I mean, it was definitely culture shock for me. Like I've never, yeah. that was like the furthest I've ever been, you know, hmm. until is I met my, like her family's from. Yeah, her family's from India. So it was, it was super different. Uh, people like the lifestyle is just, it's just so interesting being an outsider, like going there and like just staying there and kind of like being observant, you know, and just like sitting back and like watching what people do day to day mm-hmm. and like people in the markets and stuff or mm-hmm. trying to sell like shoes or trying to sell like different materials, like clo like cloth and stuff. And that's what I found interesting was like, we didn't, it wasn't like a fancy place. It was more like a village where we were at. Hmm. So it was very just different in so many ways. Like there's cows walking around the street, sure, yeah. rickshaws, like all these different things. The food was amazing. But did you get, did you get sick out there? Um, Cause that's my like. I had like some stomach problems yeah, <laughs> a couple so times I, because yeah. I might have eaten like something that I shouldn't have ate or whatever. And like deli belly, I think they call it or something. Yeah, something like that. But it wasn't bad, though. Like uh, there was like probably one or two days where I decided just not to eat anything. 
And yeah. like we we were taking like trips to like all these different temples, like this Buddhist temple, which was or so just cool. all made out of marble and stuff. It was yeah. unbelievable the amount of temples over there. Hmm. And uh, it, it, I was just like because the road trip to go to some of the places were like several hours. I'll just not eat because I like I was not doing a public bathroom. That was not happening over there. Oh God, I would never. Yeah, there was one time I made the mistake of going into a public bathroom, and I came out and Ro was like, "She's like, what's wrong?" I was like, "I want to go back to the house now." <laughs> it's disgusting. That happened to me in Cuba too when we were in the airport, and I was like, I went into the airport bathroom mm -hmm. and like. I walked right back out because I like got sick towards the end and I was like, I don't, I think I'm going to get sick. Yeah. And I was like, let me just go before we get on the plane. So I'm not getting sick on the plane. And I came right back out. He was like, that was fast. I was like, <laughs> I was like mm, I'd rather puke in a plane. Yeah. Like I am not <laughs> doing that. I don't know what the fuck that was. Right. Like, I was like mm -mm. and that's normal for some people, you know? Yeah, I was shocked. Yeah. Especially being like I because I did use I was like the only one using like the public bathrooms and my husband was like, Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. Because they don't have toilet paper in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Like, so when I was doing a lot of research, like I brought rolls from home. Mm -hmm. I was like, fuck this shit. And um, same in I India. Was, That's what they don't have any toilet paper either. They have like a little hose thing. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Take me back to the place. <laughs> I'm and good. Like, you know, that's why I was like laughing because I was like, this trip's going to make us a lot closer. <laughs> <laughs> right? So nuts. But I appreciate that shit because it there's just so many. It, it sucks sometimes being in the moment. Mm -hmm. you, but like, yeah. It, it, it makes for good stories. Yeah. Later. Definitely. And I don't know, like culturally, learning about people's culture when you're actually living there mm -hmm. is really special. Because if you can just take it all in and you're not working all the time, like even here, I feel like even people who come from like, let's say Switzerland, they come to New York City, they can take it in a lot better than we can because we yeah. live here. We're working here. We're doing all these things. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, like even like looking back at that trip, there was like things that I saw. Like I saw a peacock that I've never seen before. You know, like I've gone to the zoo here and stuff and seen peacocks. But there was this one town that we went to. And I, I remember distinctly, like in this farm field, this peacock was walking like so majestically across like this farmland and it just like spread its wings. And it was like early in the morning. So like the sun was like just coming up and it was just like memorable. Those little moments, you know? Yeah. I've, yeah. And that's what I love about traveling so much because it's like those simple little things mm -hmm. just really stick with you for a long time. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. How long was the flight there? I think <laughs> we had to take a flight to Dubai. We had to lay, wow. lay over in Dubai for like a couple hours. And then, uh, so I think like 17, 18 hours. Jesus. Something like that. Oh my God. It was it was long. It was really long. So long. But uh, fly Emirates though. If you ever go, fly Emirates. Emirates is a freaking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've, heard, I've heard good things about them. Emirates is amazing. They're just... Like we weren't in first class or anything. We were in regular, you know, coach, really? but they took such good care of us and they're so nice. I, I feel like the the space too was pretty good. Like the oh, the like leg room and everything. It was it was yeah. great. Yeah, I got um yeah, my husband is like he's like, I'm never going to India with you. Sorry. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> he's like, Nope, can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, I don't think he would do well there. <laughs> <laughs> he's not he's not about indian food at all like but i mm. am and i like i love the culture like so obsessed with it i i think i would go with an empty suitcase and just buy so much shit yeah there's so much to buy there like, so much and mm -hmm. jewelry. oh my god oh yeah the jewelry you would love the jewelry i mean I, we went to some of these places and all and the, the gold that they have is like sure. gold you've never seen before yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah, so let's get into like uh, your book maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I still haven't gotten my copy yet. I know. I know you're like sold out and on back order and all that good stuff. I know. <laughs> I actually have on my phone because I keep checking it because I'm like, the fuck Amazon. But uh, I think it's supposed to come this next week, like Tuesday. I'm supposed to get the order. Mm -hmm. 
So hopefully, yeah, hopefully they're on time with it. It's like, it sucks too, because I'm like, this whole Corona thing is like delaying all yeah. the fucking shit. Yeah, that's hopefully. another thing. You, like, you can't even travel. You know, we're not going to be able to travel for some time. I know. But. Yeah. Gives you some time, though, to promote your book. I know. I mean, this is perfect timing for me. Mm-hmm. You know, um. It's a great time, actually, to kind of just see where you're at and then, like, maybe make your next big leap. And yeah, maybe that's yeah. what you needed. Maybe you yeah. need to slow down to speed up. Yeah, because I said to myself, like, it's so funny. I said this, like, a few days before I got onto Gary Vee. I was like, I'm going to come out of this shit, out of this fucking quarantine, <laughs> full-time author. I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. So, like, and then a few days later, I was, like, on Gary Vee. I was like, that's just so wild. <laughs> but, you know. I think things happen like that for a reason. Oh, yeah. You know, I think he said something like that where he was just like, I believe like Corona like somehow happened. He's like, look at it. Now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Shit happens like that. You got to take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. So. so tell me about like uh, a little bit more about your book. I like, get into some details of either not just the process, but some of your thoughts going into it. You know, like putting together all the, like the, you know, the journaling that you did while you were traveling and then how, how you compiled that and eventually how do you even like launch the book? Well, I, I was doing a lot of promotion of it for a while, while I was even still writing it and I was working full time. So it, it, that also took a while and I used to work in mental health for a bit um very brief time like maybe a year or two um it's not for me I actually studied that shit in school <laughs> and I was like yeah no <laughs> um it was it was hard to write the book because I was like so burnt out from that field and like dealing with my own stress and anxiety of like working there and then like trying to get my book out at the same time and then you know there was a lot of like self-doubt too with it because I was like what do I say and like I'm telling all these stories I'm like people are gonna fucking judge me and like yeah you know it's it was hard because you know I was I was young and I was single and I met a lot of people and like I had a lot of flings and I was like fuck I was like everybody's gonna think I'm a fucking whore back (laughs) but I was like but I don't like I don't know. I felt like even if the relationship or the fling was short versus however a few months or whatever it was, I always learned something from it. Mm -hmm. Always did. And I was like, I always learned something about myself or like, and then I kept, you know, who I kept like referring back to in my mind. Like, I don't know if you've ever read her book, but Chelsea Handler wrote her book. I think her first one, Mm -hmm. forget what it's called. She talks about so much of her sex life that I was like, Jesus Christ, lady. <laughs> but it's hilarious. And I was like, it's so relatable. Yeah. I was like, all right, I've been there, you know? And like, so that part, like talking about like relationships and like people I've met, that was a little scary. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh. Being open with that side of yourself, right? Yeah. And then I was like worried too, because I was just like, what if these guys like find out that I wrote about them? <laughs> so, I mean, I changed the names and details, but... I'm like, if they read it, I'm like, they're going to figure it out. <laughs> I was like, well. They should be honored to be in your book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you got a whole chapter. <laughs> I'm sure they remember you too really well. And, sure. you know, they probably take some things back. <laughs> sure. Like, I, so. you know, it's funny. One of the guys um, that I had a fling with um, on the first trip, he bought it. And I was like, oh. I was like, I'm sweating. I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, I feel like I should tell you that you're in it <laughs> before you read it. I mean, it, we didn't do, we weren't intimate at all. It was like mm-hmm. a thing. Like it was like when I was like, um, that was like the first trip when I went to Europe. But um, I was like, I promise there's nothing bad. And he was like, well, I feel honored that I'm in your book. He's like, now I can live forever. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, just don't be mad at me. <laughs> I was like, appreciate that you bought it. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Like, and I hadn't talked to him in years. And I was like, oh, fuck. When I saw his order, I was like, ah, oh, shit. 
but I was like, uh, enjoy, have fun. <laughs> but I haven't heard anything from him. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know if he read it or not. But um, yeah, but it was definitely a, a long process and I'm glad that it's done. And mm-hmm. I'm happy that people are resonating with it. And um, I do those little snippets and like somebody was like messaging me yesterday. And she was like, what? You stopped it there? Like, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm not reading the whole fucking book to you. You bitch. <laughs> she was like, wait, what? What happened? I was like, I can't tell you. I was like, you got to read it. <laughs> what was the hardest part of writing the book? Um, I think, right, because um, the guy, he's the only one that I left his name in there. Um, a friend of mine, Adam. And he was the one that I met in Switzerland that we went uh, rock climbing with. And he, we went to Costa Rica together and it didn't like, I feel like because we were together for so long, like two weeks, 24 seven, don't really know each other. We were butting heads a lot. Mm -hmm. We didn't really end the trip very well. And then like a year or two after that trip, he died. Oh man. So I never got the chance to like, squash it Mm -hmm. like reconcile a little bit yeah i was so upset and i was in the middle of writing that chapter and i was like i can't i can't do this i was like can't write this chapter i was like i don't know what to do like i went to a fucking medium Mm. like i don't fucking know i was like maybe she can channel his ass yeah so i did and i wrote about it in there because and then she you know she was like telling me she was telling me shit that there, i was like there's no way she knows this yeah she was picking up on shit and- so it was a good experience then with the medium like it was like yeah. it connected yeah wow i always wanted was wondering like to do that but yeah i go to this lazy lady in jersey i can give you her she's like wow but she she only does like she'll like channel people who have passed on like she's mm. not like a psychic or anything but um she told me via him that he wants my his name kept in the book. And so I was like, okay. He was like, he's honored. And he said, you know, there's no ill feelings between him and I. He's like, it's, he's like, that wasn't, he's like, I wasn't mad. He's like, you were. He was like, he's, <laughs> he's like, I didn't think that trip was bad. You're the one who thought that, <laughs> you know, he's like, we're good. He was like, and he, you know, so it was cool, but it's, it was just like shitty that like, yeah, cause I didn't want it to look bad for him also, you know? Mm. And like, I reached out to his mom actually. Cause I was like, I don't know who to talk to. Cause I was like, I was like, I don't know you, but I just wanted to like tell you like to him in some way. Like, I'm sorry that like, yeah we didn't we didn't like mesh or whatever and her i have what she said to me in the book and like it was just such a cool experience and then once i did all that then i was able to write the rest of the chapter and then keep going you know yeah so that was the hardest part huh yeah that was a hard one yeah 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 it sucked what was the most fun you had like writing the book like other than getting everything finalized um, I think, uh, I think, you know, getting the, the, it was your, it was your uh, first book, right? Yeah. Um, getting the photos together, like the, um, like for the cover, mm-hmm. like that was fun. Cause I did like a photo shoot. Um, and then honestly, I think like getting, like I found this guy on Twitter. Um, what's his name? Curtis I think his name is yeah his name's Curtis um he's like from his his company is called CM Designs but he I was like looking for a graphic artist and I found him on Twitter and I was like you know it's like one in a million if you find a good one on Twitter like a lot of them are fucking shitty yeah and I told him my vision and like what I wanted and he blew it out of the park I was like and then I think he, he also redesigned my website. Like he did my logo mm-hmm. and I was like, Oh, like he, well, first I think he did my logo first. And I was like, Holy shit. Like you nailed that. 
exactly what I wanted. And I got the jerseyness in there. I got the travel. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when he, it was very fun working with him because he, we just meshed creatively. And I honestly like could have like maybe not even told him anything and I would trust that he would, he would nail it. It's great. Yeah. He was awesome to work with. And I've, messaged him like the other day i was like i got number two coming i was like (laughs) so excited so that that was fun great yeah and now you got the second book coming up Mm -hmm. yeah focusing on anxiety that's a big topic i know everybody struggles with at some point or another you know we all deal with it in different ways some good ways some bad ways but that, it seems like it's a pretty like it's home for you like that topic yeah yeah I mean I've kind of dealt with it for a lot I mean uh mine really stems from trauma it's not I, I think I was kind of <clears throat> a little anxious in school because I was like shy and just didn't have like I guess the confidence or whatever mm-hmm. or like I felt like some days I did some days I didn't but um I just have felt that, you know, between my own experience and then like when I was working in mental health too, that, and then I have, my husband has a daughter. So, um, she was dealing with it in school and like listening to her and then listening to her friend's stories that she would tell me. And I'd be like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, everybody like, doesn't like, and I was like, nobody has coping skills where I would hear like, you know, even my sister, like my nephew and like his group of friends and like what they deal with. And I'm like, Oh, like there has to be something for them. Yeah. And, um, I couldn't, like, I did my research a little bit where I was like looking for books for kids and teens. And I was like, it's all clinical shit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no fucking teen or kid is going to want to read a clinical book. Yeah. I'm sorry to break it to you, but they're not. So I found one lady, I bought her book and hers wasn't that, like hers was like a cartoon, but I bought it because I just kind of wanted to get an idea of how she was doing it. Mm -hmm. Like it was still so clinical. Like she was talking about parts of the brain. I was like, you think a kid's going to know what part of the brain, like, no. They want to know what they can do. Yeah. So I was like, no, no, no. I was like, there has to be something. So I wanted to write it like a story where it was like those clinical things are in there, but like hidden Mm -hmm. in a way where it's not like super in your face, like textbooky, you know? Um, so this is something I'm super excited for. And like my stepdaughter and my husband helped me a lot with this one. They, they always say, you better give us credit. We helped you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they, yeah, so they were a huge part of it. Um, but I'm super excited for that because I think kids need something. Yeah. And, and I think now, um, you know, and then with social media, which like, I think definitely plays a role. Um, and then... You know, even so, even with this stuff now, with what's going on with this whole Corona thing. Yeah. It's like. I couldn't imagine being a kid now, like being home all day with your parents while they're like possibly working from home or maybe they're not working from home. Yeah, you know, maybe they scary. lost their job and you have to be home with them all day. Other mm-hmm. siblings and stuff. Like, how do you cope in the household right now as a yeah, kid? And as a kid, you don't have that much, I guess, authority as it is. So. Yeah it's it's tough i mean it's it's tough for for me yeah i'm an adult you know it's Mm -hmm. tough and um there's just so much uncertainty out there and then like i don't know i don't i don't know what's going on with kids like what their thought process is of like what's going on like are they just enjoying the hell of it out of it because it's like ah fuck it i'm home Mm -hmm. or are they scared shitless and i'm sure it's a mixture of both but um I think this is, I, I don't know. I have a gut feeling about this one. Like I've been really quiet about it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, I'm not giving so much detail. Um, I am because I just feel like this is, this is going to be it. 
like I don't want to jinx myself. Yeah. So is it? Are you still like finalizing it, or it's yeah, pretty much it's, almost done? It's done, but it's. No, I hate editing. I'm such a bitch. <laughs> So now I kind of do my, how I do it is like, I go through my round of it. Like I'll read through it myself and edit it a little bit myself. And mm-hmm. then I have this editor that I found again, I found her on Twitter. She's amazing. Um, she worked with Don Miguel Ruiz, mm-hmm. who, the guy who did the four agreements, that book. Uh, she's worked with him. Um, so she's, she's great. So, um, yeah, and then between her and I, depending. I mean, this one's shorter than my first one, so hopefully it's not so much back and forth. But usually her and I, like the last one, we did like three or four drafts back and forth. Like she'll edit it, I'll go back and do it. And I'm like, and I like that she, like, she allows the uh, creativity there. Like she'll make points of like, I think this needs to be deleted. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, hmm. I have to respectfully disagree with you. I'm like, no, I'm keeping it. I was like, this is how I, because I've had somebody else who critiqued my stuff and said like, oh, you're, there's too much detail. You, you write in too much detail. That's gotta be annoying as fuck, actually. I don't know how I would feel about that. <laughs> no, because I was just like, well, um, okay. But I, for me, that's my strong suit. Yeah. Like, cause now then I'm glad I kept it because people who have reviewed it or come back to me felt like it's told me like I felt like I was right there with you because of the details yeah. you know so I don't know. you never it's you such never a process know. like from mm-hmm. drafting and then mm-hmm. putting it together and then going back and editing it I could see how it could take years it's kind of intimidating actually <laughs> yeah it's a it's a long process but I do think like people try to do it as cheaply as possible and it doesn't have to be thousands and thousands of dollars. And that's, I think that's why it takes a while too. Cause like, I didn't have the money to, you know, just drop for my book. I mean, it cost me a bit. Yeah. It, like my first one cost me a lot. So I, and then I was doing like a payment plan. That's kind of why it took so long. Cause I was like, yeah, no, mm-hmm. but, um, there's ones out there who are charging like six thousand dollars to do it. I'm like, are you fucking out of your mind? <laughs> I'm like, no. So like, I think there's like a happy medium there where it's like, it doesn't. You you do get what you pay for. Yeah. So. And then after it's done, you got to promote it. Got to yeah. get it out there. Get that reach. Yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of planning. But when do you think this one's coming out? Well, I have my editor like. So I have, she just booked me for June 1 to do the editing. So it's definitely going to be, my book will be ready for her by June. So hopefully, I don't know, hopefully, well, depending on how this whole Corona shit goes. I mean, like this whole unemployment situation is Mm -hmm. insane. I'm like, can you guys fucking pay me? (laughs) So um, I would say maybe by the end of the summer. Maybe in the beginning of the school year, hopefully. Cool. I think, I think by September it should be it should be good. I think, hopefully. Great. Well, it's yeah. exciting, man. I mean, yeah, you're doing big things here. You yeah, can have your second book down. Yeah. Full time. I already, I already have a third in my head. So, um, because I think I'm gonna make this kids once like a little. I don't know how many, but I think I'm gonna make it a series. Mm-hmm. So I already have like the third one after this one. So I haven't started. I'm not even going to think about it yet, but I have ideas. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to reading your book. Um, a lot of times I end up buying people's books as a, like support, but then I don't read them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I have some I like have, Gary's have books some. and I haven't read them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I have horrible. No, I have some good books too. But um. I mean, listen, we all are bored out of our minds. So I'm like, now I'm actually like, oh, maybe I should actually sit down and read this book that I've been wanting to read. Like I have so many in my Kindle and I have paperbacks. So I'm like trying to go through them all. Yeah. So. And I think you're doing great too. Like uh, putting out the content as well, like in conjunction with your books. Yeah. So that was great advice, you know, 
that yeah. Gary had. And I, I think it's, uh, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm trying to like find the balance of like, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm running out of things to do. Cause I don't, I'm so used to being a writer that I'm like, like the video part is like, I'm like, I don't, what do I say? I don't know what the fuck to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. And like people want certain things and like that is like overwhelming too because they're just like, you should do this. Like you should do that. Like somebody was like, you should do acting videos. I'm like, what? Acting videos? Interesting. Yeah. yeah I was like, no, no. <laughs> I was like that's asking for a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Have fun with it though. Like enjoy your journey, you know, like this is, this is just like the start still, right? Yeah. And I think like people are like, oh, you should do this. You should look like this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, do you guys realize like this has only been like a week and some change Mm -hmm. and I started doing this shit and I'm like still not 100% comfortable. Like like, calm your tits, people. (laughs) I'm still working through it. Like you're like lucky I'm even fucking doing this right now. Because I'm like Gary V. like when he said uh, we're all watching, I was like, fuck yeah you asked for it you did <sighs> be careful what you wish for <laughs> i literally had people messaging me like this it made me laugh but he was like he was like hey yo bitch he's like i'm fucking watching you <laughs> I was like, we're watching we're watching i was like okay okay <laughs> and i was like you guys are relentless man but i need that i need that like fire yeah to, like motivate me it's different too when there's other people's eyes on you you know like that and like people who are actually counting on you like some people they look up to you right yeah. you never know like who you're gonna like who you're gonna reach that or you're actually gonna help there could be like a person who's 14 15 years old who's watching your content right now and they're like waiting for you to like say something because it's just that connection that they have, right? I know. I had someone reach out to me recently that they've been following me since 2013 and that I inspired them to take um, a trip and travel. And she was traveling for six years. And I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, yeah, you really inspired me to do it. I was like, wow. bitch, I'm, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, that's amazing. But uh, yeah, I like, I guess I don't realize it because it's like, I'm just doing like I'm doing it a lot for myself, but I'm also like just trying to inspire people. But like, you know, you don't you don't know who you're hitting, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's cool when people like not that I'm seeking the validation from it, but it is cool to hear it. Yeah, certainly. I've inspired certain people that much because it's like, wow, I'm like, oh, okay, like my stuff is actually hitting some people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like it's not just from it's not just to inspire myself, but. It's a good feeling to matter, you know, to give some significance back to the yeah. world that could last longer than just like in your own mind, you know? Yeah, but this was another thing that I thought of like after Gary's call because I was like, well, I guess I'm going to find out if I suck or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the criticism, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was like, I guess I'll find out if people like my shit because that was always a thought in my head. I'm like, maybe I'm just not good. Like, yeah you know how like gary will be like maybe you just fucking suck yeah <laughs> and i'm like shit maybe i was like fuck now i'm gonna f- really find out yeah but that's the truth maybe you need that truth like do i suck yeah. do i not <laughs> like so I mean, it's it's relatively been very very positive so that's really mm-hmm. reassuring so you know haven't had i really haven't had really negative stuff just some creepy shit but, mm-hmm. you know, i think that comes with the territory it's the huge mm-hmm. social media right yeah such weirdos out there (laughs) yeah they're bored bored people that don't have dreams and are not working on things like books and podcasts so yeah exactly yeah but this is cool like i like it's cool that you're doing podcasts it's awesome thank you thank you i'm working hard on it (laughs) yeah i mean the sound like i could tell like the sound sounds amazing Mm -hmm. i was uh, it's been hard you know the last few months uh or last yeah month since like the corona stuff because Mm -hmm. I set up the studio at the house and like I had people in and I was like, should I keep it going? And I was like, it's my home. It's not like I have like a studio that I'm going to. So I don't know if I want people like in my house like that right now. Yeah. So then I was figuring out how I can do like a zoom or any kind of video broadcast instead. And would it still be the same? So this is actually the first virtual one that I'm doing. So this is the test run for me. (laughs) Um, but, uh, Yeah, this has been great so far. Um, mm-hmm. 
I'd love to have you on again, you know, yeah. down the road in another year yeah, sure. or whatever, do some checkpoints and see where you're at and talk about another book. Yeah, so this would be cool. I like it. Wherever you're going to travel next. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully soon. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I think, well, because we got married during this whole Corona shit, so we want to plan our honeymoon at some point. Yes. So I don't know. I he really wants to go to Japan. Mm. Would be awesome, but he's like, I can't do that flight. I was like, (laughs) he can do it. He can do it. I was like, I think I was like, you. I think you'll be all right. Just fall asleep on the plane, watch a whole bunch of movies. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. But um, I I was telling him, I was like, this might be the time to kind of buy something now, maybe for the future. I was like, flights might be legit now. Mm Hmm. I was like telling him we should look into it. Definitely. It's a great time right now. I know. I, I haven't even looked because if I look, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, I can go to this place for this. Yeah, it's crazy. It's actually crazy. Don't look. <laughs> yeah, it's going to make me upset. <laughs> but all right, I think we're about to wrap it up here. Cool. So I just want to say, um, everybody, check out uh, TravelingJerseyGirl.com where you can find Laura's book, Spiritual Nomad, Journey Within and Abroad. And stay tuned for her second book. Uh, Is there a title yet? I have a title in my head, but I can't say. She can't say it. Not not yet. (laughs) So stay tuned for this second book. It's going to be focusing on teen anxiety and overcoming anxiety. I'm sure it's going to help not just teens, but I'm sure there's going to be some things in there, right? Mm -hmm. For pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. And... uh, yeah, keep track of uh, Laura on social media. Was it uh, Travel Jers Girl? Yeah, yeah, it's Travel J E R Z Girl. Cool. That's, yeah, it's across the board with all of my social. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today's episode. Say goodbye, Laura. All right. See ya. Adios.